I'm confident that one of the great things that our, our walk and our relationship to the Lord boils down to, comes down to one word, and that word is trust. Are you going to trust me? Uh, we see that happening all through the Old Testament with the children of Israel. Uh, God put them in positions where they had opportunity to trust the Lord or to not trust the Lord, and too many times they did not trust the word that God had spoken to them. Uh, good morning, Wayne Hathaway with you here on Some Good Seeds. And the seed that I want to plant this morning is, well, it's another it's another lesson in trust. We find it in Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Our reading today is in Ezra, chapter 2 and 3, and in Luke, chapter 8. And this is the, this is the little seed that I found. You know, as I pray and ask the Lord to bless my time in the Word, I, I don't do it to... Uh, put a check in a little box, say that I've done my reading for the day, just as has changed my whole approach to the Word. And and I pray beforehand and ask the Lord to reveal something to me, and, and then I look for something. I'm not just reading to read, I'm reading to look for something. And it's amazing how each day the Lord brings truth to my own heart. So I want to encourage you uh, again today, be in the Word. And uh, as we read, we find God giving opportunity to his people to trust him. And today, it's another lesson in trust in the, in the passage that I want to read this morning. Now, the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. As I said, here's another lesson in trust. You know, it would have seemed only the natural and right thing to do would for would be for Jesus to take the man with him, to teach him, to instruct him in the things of the kingdom of God. Yet, Jesus sends him away. It wasn't the time to do that. Enter trust. The interesting thing to me is that without, it appears as you read the text, without hesitation, the man did exactly what Jesus told him to do. And what a testimony it must have been to the whole city. They knew him. I mean, they had. They were afraid to go out in near the, the cemetery or where the tombs were because this guy was always out there doing all the stuff that he was doing. But what a testimony it must have been to the whole city. They had firsthand experience in, in dealing with this guy. And now here he is, and I love this little phrase, clothed and in his right mind. And what was he doing? He was telling them everything that Jesus had done for him. They, they had been powerless to restrain this guy. They had been terrorized by him. And now there he is standing clothed and in his right mind, testifying of the grace of God that had come into his life. Isn't it amazing? Amazingly, he does all of that without any training, without a degree, with none of those, none of those benefits. All he does is tell what Jesus has done for him. Who knows? All the things, I can't even imagine, all the things that must have gone through his mind during those dark nights and those lonely days, uh, those demonic dark hours. But the fruit of what happened was evident to everyone. Jesus had set him free. Praise the Lord. So how does that minister to us? How can we take that little seed and uh, plant it in our own hearts and lives and let it grow? Well, Obviously, it comes back to this business of trust. He wanted to go with Jesus. He wanted to be with him. Something had happened. He recognized that this man was a different man than any that he had ever encountered, and he wanted to be with him. But this man tells him, go and tell everybody what's happened to you. Trust me, Jesus said. Trust me. It's not time for you to be with me. It wasn't the place, the right thing. Trust me. Just go do what I tell you. And the result of that was the whole city was touched by, by the power of God. They saw and witnessed this amazing demonstration of the change that comes into a person's life when Jesus enters the scene. How's it been for you in your life? Has the Lord made that kind of change? Oh, I'm not saying or suggesting that any of you have been demon-possessed. Maybe. I don't know. But, but every one of us, when we came to Jesus... He has made such a difference in our life. And that's our testimony. And so what should we do? Well, you don't have to have a theological degree. You don't have to be a, a pastor or a missionary. All you have to be is somebody who knows that Jesus has touched your life. 
and share that change with those that you come in contact with. Point them to Jesus. Trust him in all that you say and do. Believe in, well, what does Proverbs say? Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. That's, that's what we do. That's an evidence of trust. Trusting the Lord in every situation that he knows what he's doing and what he says he means, and we can trust him. Amen. Well, may the Lord richly bless you today. And, and if this is a blessing, like us on Facebook, share it with other friends on your Facebook page, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, and please leave a note once in a while. I'll respond. Love it when you do that. Thank you so much. May the Lord richly bless you today.